Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is the reading for the week of July 3rd. And I feel a little bit like I am speaking through a tube, <laughs> like I'm very, very far away and transmitting a message like through a tube, sending it off so that it can reach someone somewhere. <laughs> it's part of the, the silence bubble I'm still finding myself in. I think that's gonna start to shift out um, like the silence, the insularness that we've been talking about for a couple of weeks. It's going to start shifting out um, probably this weekend, honestly, because we'll start feeling the Capricorn full moon and then we'll already be thinking about shifting into Leo season after that, if you can even believe it. But um, one thing at a time for this week, we are still very much in the bubble of silence, of solitude, hopefully making the best of that and enjoying that as much as possible. And the theme for this week is absolutely, I feel, <laughs> um, at least for me and definitely for anybody resonating with this reading, the theme of the week is emotional maturity. Emotional maturity. And there's so many ways to go with that. Um, before I start rambling, I'm gonna get some cards and see like what direction what, what's, what's the direction? Okay, well, the very first card out, guys, is the Nine of Cups. <laughs> so, oh my god. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm speechless for a minute here because this is one of those moments, um, and this might be one of the first times this has been caught on camera, where the universe sends me like a new understanding of a card, right? Um, like when I learned to read cards, I just started like going through the cards one by one, one card a day, and then looking up the meaning of the card. And I started with the very just traditional, whatever you get when you Google it kind of meaning of the cards. And then I, you know, got into more of like the subtext of the cards and the deeper archetypes. And now I basically just go with the vibe I get from the card and the lessons that I receive for my own, through my own personal spiritual journey on like what the cards mean for me and how I can interpret them. And in that way i'm always getting like a new meaning <laughs> for the card and right now this is one of those moments where i'm getting a new meaning for the nine of cups so traditionally the nine of cups is like wish come true <laughs> right and it can also be a little bit sometimes of like because if you think of the the like the rider rider weight nine of cups it's like the bench sitting guy is how i always remembered that card the bench sitting guy it's that guy sitting on a bench so one of the other meanings about the the nine of cups that um some tarot readers i really uh resonate with that they the the description they use for the nine of cups is that it's a place of comfort and satisfaction but only it's only temporary right you wouldn't want to sit on the bench forever bench sitting guy eventually has to get up and go seek the ten of cups so those meanings of like wish come true and having a temporary moment of fulfillment and joy before moving on those meanings are definitely here but <laughs> now i am seeing the nine of cups to actually represent emotional maturity right that's what i said and then this card spat out and it makes a lot of sense this is, it's making it like it's clicking in my mind how much sense this is making because the nines right just think of the nines in the tarot the nine of pentacles if you compare the Nine of Cups to the Nine of Pentacles, right, the Nine of Pentacles is that kind of independent wealth, um, independent feelings of like, yes, this is me, I am here, I am this, I am comfortable, I am wealthy, I am rich, I am satisfied, right? And, and it, But in a very earthly kind of way. So taking that theme of the Nine, of being like fulfilled and reaching the stage of completion, completion? <laughs> reaching this stage of completion, but it being a solitary thing and not really, not with no emphasis on loneliness or aloneness. That's not really emphasized here at all. It's this feeling of it's about me, right? It's about me. This is my time. This is my accomplishment. This is my journey. This is my energy. This is my moment this is my house this is my solitude those feelings of the nine to me it's at least in the tarot right nines in other types of numerology that's something else but nines in the tarot it's the feeling of it this is about me this is centered on me and the tens that's when you go from the nine to the ten and the ten it all ripples out into the collective right ten of cups is all of this joy and wealth and happiness and spirituality spilling out into your family and your collective but with the nine it's about you right it's about you so this is about you and your emotional maturity and having this emotional maturity having it be 
I don't even know how to describe it. It's like it has nothing to do with anybody else. It, it's, it's just, it's just, this is about you, right? We don't even need to talk about what's going on with anybody else or anything to do with anybody else. This is about you and your own, I'm gonna put this right at the top because this is the card. Now, every time I'm gonna see the Nine of Cups, I'm going to remember this moment and remember that the Nine of Cups is this emotional maturity um, coming into your, your own, coming into like, so, so, okay, there's so much to say about this. I'm gonna get some cards out to direct my speech <laughs> because otherwise I will have too much, too many, too many different things to say. So let's get some cards to give me a direction here. Three of Wands, first thing, or uh, you know, next thing out here, which is fantastic because the Three of Wands is that return on investment, having progress, having good positive energy come back to you. And the Queen of Cups, I mean, have the Queen of Cups come up under the Nine of Cups, so this theme of emotional maturity, the Queen of Cups is leaving aside the major arcana. So in the, within the minor arcana, the Queen of Cups would be the most emotionally mature and balanced individual. I mean, sitting right next to the King of Cups. And death and transformation. So the emotional maturity that you are and um, the bottom of the deck was the hanged man so this is where we've been right this is where we've been sitting in this this whole thing this whole thing of solitude and insularness and tranquility and uh, trying to lean into the positive enjoyable aspects of isolation and inward lookingness right having maybe you've had a forced hanged man moment where suddenly the universe put you to a stop or suddenly things got turned around on you or suddenly things just didn't feel moving and grooving like they were right you've been forced into this hanged man but you have been going inwards to find your emotional maturity. That's what you've been doing. That's what you've been doing. And this is the week, <laughs> this is the week when you start to gain that type of mastery, right? You start to gain the type of mastery. So, there's like, of course there's like a spectrum to this, right? Because it depends where your emotional body was kind of coming into this week <laughs> is, that's gonna be your starting point. So, Cancer energy, when cancer energy is not functioning well, it can be very much like a whiny little kid, like wah, wah, wah. Like I can't eat my pizza without ranch, wah, wah, wah. Things are like, I don't, wah, 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 right? It can be, it can be that kind of thing. Um, so if the, if the cancer season, especially the cancer new moon, like hit you pretty hard and you find your, you found yourself kind of feeling like wah, 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 right? this is, you're going to be like overcoming those type of feelings because you're probably looking at yourself going like, I don't want to be all wah, right? I don't want to be all whiny. I don't want to be all wah. I don't like the way that makes me feel. Uh, and besides, it's like, I, I want to get back to my maturity. I want to get back to my stability. I want to get back to my strength. I want to get back to feeling like the queen or the king of cups, right? I want to get back to feeling like I have my shit together. I want to get back to feeling like, like I have my center, right? I want to get back to feeling like I have my center. If you came into this week also on the other end of the spectrum, right? The one end of the spectrum is if you've been feeling kind of whiny, right? And that's fine. That's totally fine. We all feel whiny. And especially when it's been cancer season, everyone gets whiny. It, like, so that's no, no. And part, so part of this emotional maturity thing is to understand that if you were feeling kind of whiny, that that's fine, right? Emotional maturity doesn't have to mean that you never, that Emotional maturity is not being flame retardant. Emotional maturity is not being a rock who never like wavers, right? Emotional maturity is like, doesn't really matter how you swing, right? It doesn't really matter how, where the wind takes you. If you get blown off course and into like whiny, 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 <laughs> like that's fine. You just go, okay, I'm done with that now. And then you just put yourself back and you're like, okay, I'm back. I am the queen of cups once more. I am my mature self once more. Um, so, but on the other end of the spectrum, if you've already been feeling very stable, already been feeling very 
centered, already feeling like you have been tuning into the deep inner well of tranquility, if you've already been there, then this is an even greater leveling up. It's like a stabilization and a leveling up. So no matter where you're at, you're stabilizing, you're, you're stabilizing your emotional body and then leveling it up into this more mature experience of your emotions, um, basically. <laughs> uh, but so t again, there's like these two different things happening. The, like the, the material and the spiritual, the material and the spiritual, and they're coming together and harmonizing really, really nicely this week, which is very exciting because nine of cups and the three of wands, I mean, to go back to, you know, traditional interpretations of these cards, this literally reads, wish come true, return on investment. <laughs> Who doesn't like the sounds of that, right? So it's some it's some 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 type of energy coming back to you in a materialized form, right? What have you been wishing for? What have you been seeking? What what is it that you've been looking for? It's coming back to you. It's coming back to you. It's returning. Um, and this is like giving you like the boost forward, like the material foundation or the boost forward. And this can include just like some time off, right? It's like whatever your soul truly, truly needs at this time, at this time. So the thing that returns to you this week, the wish that comes true this week, because just imagine you have all kinds of wishes. You have all kinds of energies that could be returning to you. So this week, it's whatever is most aligned for this energy. It's what it's whatever is a vibrational match for your energy this week. And this is part of a message I've been receiving all week. I almost made a whole video about it, but here it is. It comes out right here. So now I'm going to mention it right here. It's that if you've been, f if you've been feeling like you're at some kind of plateau, and again, this plateau, it, it can feel for some people, it can feel like a black pit. For others, it can just feel like the kind of doldrums, like a boring white room, just kind of blah. For others, it can feel like sitting on top of the mountain, on top of the mountain, on that plateau, on top of the mountain, feeling fantastic, but then feeling, but then you're sitting there for so long, kind of going like, well, what's next? I came to the top of the mountain, like what's my next journey? So kind of sitting there, no matter where you're at, if you're at like the bottom or the middle or the heights, no matter where you're at with this, this kind of feeling of this energy, kind of been feeling in this hanged man situation going, okay, 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 this is this is cool, this is good, but it's also kind of still, it's also kind of like I don't know what's next. And there can even be feelings of maybe even feeling spiritually disconnected, um, like disconnected from your guides or maybe not receiving downloads or maybe feeling like your intuition has been off or just kind of like not feeling the energetic flow, however it is normal for you, right? So if you look back on the past few months, however you've been feeling the energy, however your spirituality has been, it, it maybe it's been like a bit, a little bit of a pause. Something has been on pause. I can definitely tell you that I haven't really, over the past couple of weeks, yeah, basically as soon as we got into cancer season, so the very first couple of days of cancer season for me were like an explosion of downloads, but then it really kind of petered out and I haven't really been feeling that It's not that I feel disconnected because it's not that. It's not that we're disconnected, but it, it, it's just like there's this weird pause with the spiritual energy. But I, I just, at the risk of repeating myself, and I mean, I do it all the time, so I'm gonna forge ahead and repeat myself, but if you've been feeling spiritually disconnected, please just understand that you, that's not what's happening here. That is, you are absolutely, at, you're more connected, actually. You are more connected, you're more connected than ever it's just the way the energy has been flowing through you lately for whatever reason. And the reasons don't even matter right now. The reasons don't even matter. I could go into them, but they don't even matter because part of the cancer energy is to understand that the reasons don't matter and to not bother trying to seek out all of this like verbal understanding, right? So we just sit there and go, okay, there are reasons for this, but it doesn't matter what they are. This is just how the energy is. And for whatever, whatever reason, I just haven't been experiencing connection or I haven't been experiencing spirituality or downloads or intuition, whatever it is for you, right? This can even be a interpersonal connection as well, just hanging out with your friends or with a partner um, or flowing with your business or your career, whatever it is. It's like there's been this pause and so looping back to what I was trying to say about this message I've been getting, that this pause is happening so that certain things can materialize in the physical. And that's what I have been feeling for the past few days, like that I've been in this pause, in this pause, in this hanged man moment, the pause is there. 
so that things can materialize in the physical. So, cause for me, like for the past three years, my entire focus, my entire passion for why I feel like I want to be alive is to have this constant like spiritual evolution, this constant expansion of my consciousness and just this like spiritual leveling up. And I just like want to like go, go, go all the time. I'm always like waiting for the next big download, the next big mystical experience, like the next big blast of energy. That's like, <laughs> it, it, like that's my passion, right? That's what I live for. Um, in this last couple of weeks, it hasn't been as much, right? It hasn't been as much. And I keep wondering like, when's going to be the next big thing? When's the next big thing? When's the next big spiritual experience? When, when's the next big plateau? When's the next big explosion? Like, what, when is it? When's it what, like, I'm really excited, really looking forward to it. Right. Um, and it, that has been just set a little bit into the future for now to give us this pause so that a few things can materialize. So for example, for me, um, I got a kitten, right? I mentioned that last week and he's in my thumbnail, my adorable little kitten. So I've spent this whole week just doting on my brand new little kitten and having this very, very grounded experience of like playing kitten mom and just doing the home life thing. <laughs> and, but like, how beautiful was that? Like I got this big pause, this big spiritual energetic pause. And the thing that returned to me was a kitten. Like was this cat energy coming back to me, right? And more of that is to come. So maybe you've already been seeing some of these things return to you in the physical. It could be like, you know, getting a check for $2,000, you know, having, having to move house, having to get a new job, having a new friend come in for you, having like some kind of new relationship, like buying a new couch, getting a new car. It's like, there are things in your physical, very human, very, very human life that it's time for them to materialize. It's actually time for them to come forth wish comes through and return on investment this energy to return to you and to materialize and so it, the sensation i get on this it was like it's very important for like the spiritual download type of situation to kind of just be put on like to be put on the back burner to be put in the background but that's those are even ba bad words because the downloads are still coming through the energy is still flowing through just as much even more than before but it's that it's just like non-cognitive and it's non-verbal and it's like coming in through like the background of your consciousness so that you can focus on like the material world that's right in front of you, right? And these things that are coming to you that are materializing in your physical life, no matter what kind of area they are in for you, right? No matter what kind of area they are in for you, they are important to lay like a new foundation for your next jumping off point, for your next journey, for your next spiritual explosion, for the next expansion of your consciousness. So it's like, it's like whatever you need, right? Whatever you need. If you need money, the money is going to come in because if you truly need the money, if you truly need the money to advance on your spiritual path, the money's going to come in <laughs> because you're going to need that to do whatever it is that you need to do, right? If you truly, truly need a new car to advance on your spiritual journey or to advance on like your, it's not even so much the emphasis on your spiritual journey. It's like your life's path, like your soul's path on the path the path that your soul is taking you. There's certain foundations that need to be laid for this next path. So that's what this energy right here is about laying those foundations for the path. So it's like, I feel like a little bit of this caveat of like, don't get like, don't put expectations or pressure on it being any one thing in particular, because you're going to get exactly what you need, right? And what we need isn't always necessarily what we want, <laughs> but it will make sense in hindsight why you get what you get and why that was exactly what you needed. So whatever comes through this week, whatever unfolds this week, it's what you need to lay the foundations for the next stage of your journey. And the next stage of the journey is coming because we have the death card, right? This transformation, this rebirth, and this outpouring. I have this feeling like this coming weekend, you know, if Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever, is gonna be like energetically like significant somehow. I didn't at, like look at the astrological transits because I'm apparently not interested in astrology so much for cancer season. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. Uh, this whole year's exper experiment of doing these weekly readings, I'm going to discover like all of these patterns. So apparently I don't like to follow the astrological transits for Aries season and cancer season. That That's an interesting little side note. But anyway, so <laughs> I don't know like what, I don't know what for, I don't know what the reasons are, right? I don't know why but that's part of this cancer energy is just follow your intuition, right? Follow your intuition, all of this nine of cups and queen of cups, follow your intuition, just follow those feelings. I have this feeling, I have this impression that 
the end of this week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is going, maybe even Thursday, right? going to be energetically intense and that's when this kind of transformation energy comes through so the beginning of this week is kind of like things solidifying things settling in that foundation being laid and that foundation is being laid so that you can jump off for this transformation right so that you can propel yourself onwards and upwards into this transformation and to tie this all back to the theme of emotional maturity for Okay, there's, there's, there's lots of different ways this can go. Uh, so, some people, what they might receive is a challenge in their life that allows them to demonstrate to themselves that they are emotionally mature. Like, you know, sometimes it's like rising to the occasion, rising to the occasion. Um, like an example is, you know, getting a new puppy and you know how you the first couple of weeks you have a new puppy are incredibly <laughs> like chaotic and stressful and if you've never had a puppy before and especially if you've never had kids before or anything like you've never had you've never been like a parent to a being right you get a new puppy and now suddenly your entire life is derailed by this puppy and you have to take him out like every two hours and you have to do all the training and you have to watch him and blah blah blah, blah and it's like this whole thing <laughs> right uh, like that's the kind of that's the kind of energy here where but like then through getting this new puppy even if you have a bit of a meltdown even if you go oh my god I don't know if I can handle this it's like yes you can you rise to the occasion and you find within you that you have the strength to be this parent to this puppy right or it can be like having to look after a loved one who is unwell something like that some kind of um challenge where in the challenge you discover your emotional maturity so for some people this like return on this energy can it can come through in weird ways it can come through in weird ways um at first something like it's like if something happens and you know your human mind like goes panic 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 this is a crisis it's like hang on hang on hang on and see how this plays out right hang on and see how this plays out because it's showing you whatever you receive this week this is how i'm going to put this whatever unfolds for you this week it is exactly what you need to understand how emotionally mature you are like because it's already inside of you so whatever happens for you this week is going to be exactly what you need in order to access like the higher frequency of your own emotional body like there's this higher experience of emotional maturity inside of you and that's what you're going to access this week it's what you're going to remember it's what you're going to find and the details of how your life plays out this week will be exactly what you need in order to experience that. I feel like I'm repeating myself more than usual this week. It's because this water energy, it's like vortexes and swirling and everything's all over the place. Don't expect anything to be linear. We are deep in the waters. But you will find that you can swim, right? You will find that you can swim. beauty extremes with the hot moon <laughs> and new beginnings yeah so this beauty card this is everyone feeling their emotional sensitivity right um but really like almost like a sharpness of it like feeling like oh my god like watching a sunset and going like this is so perfect and beautiful and sweet and feeling like the sharpness of it or what I've been feeling with my kitten right he's already bigger he's I've only had him for like a little over a week and he's already bigger than he was when I got him and I'm already thinking like what am I gonna do when he gets like full size and he's not tiny anymore and I'm gonna miss him being so tiny because he's just like my tiniest little man right <laughs> and it's like almost overwhelming how adorable the kitten is right <laughs> that, is that kind of feeling um It's funny, this is a waning gibbous. So it, it it's almost like with this cancer energy, there can be this energy of, or this theme of, it's like being nostalgic for things before they've even happened. <laughs> Have you ever like been sitting in a moment and going like, ah, one day this memory is going to be something to look back on. Or ah, one day this day is going to be the good old days. Or ah, one day I'm going to be looking back on this moment and wishing I could be back here. It's like being nostalgic for the present, but from the, pre the point of view of the future. You ever, you ever get like that? This is, this is a little bit of that energy going on. Um, I don't really think I have anything else to say about that. It's just, that's just an energy that is present and it's something to just relish in it. 
without wallowing in it. If you can do that, right? Relish it without wallowing. Relish, don't wallow. Right? And here, hot moon. Every time I read that, I wanted to say hot mess. Hot mess, extremes, hot moon. So this is exactly kind of what I was feeling about, um, you know, in order to access your emotional maturity, you're gonna experience whatever you need to experience like whatever it takes to get you there. So it can be like polarized extremes, right? It can be polarized extremes. Um, I, I feel really with this, like, cause I don't want to like make anybody feel like something bad's going to happen this week. This feels like it's like emotional energy, right? This isn't, this isn't like the tower card or anything like that. This is nothing like catastrophic happening. This is no kind of whirlwind coming through. It's people just being highly emotional because that's, where we're at right now, right? That's where we're at right now. Everybody being emotional and having those like emotional extremes. So if you are kind of surrounded people that can be rather dramatic, <laughs> can be a good good week to like kind of pull your energy back from that. But this, however this plays out, this, this emotional extremes, emotional extremes, you find your balance within that because this card comes out like right on top of Queen of Cups and nine of cups with like a, the, the new card of emotional maturity, right? You're gonna find your maturity within the extremes. You're gonna find it, you're gonna find it. And you're gonna find that you can ride the pendulum back and forth, back and forth. You don't need to stop the pendulum. You can just ride it out because all this water, you can't stop it. It doesn't stop. You can't stop the ocean. You can't stop the river. I mean, even if you dam up the river, it just like, you know, you have to manage the flow of water, right? You have to let the water through the dam or, or it'll just keep flooding its banks. Like the water has to go somewhere. It, like you can keep digging a bigger hole, but the river water will just keep filling it up. That's why, you know, dams have to be managed. <laughs> you can't stop the flow of the water. So don't try, don't try to stop the flow. Keep it flowing, keep it flowing, keep it flowing and find your mature space, which is a very neutral space, right? Finding the neutral space at the middle of it all. And this new beginnings with the death card, I mean, exactly, right? <sighs> Look at this. Bin, this card is representing like a snowy kind of barren landscape, but then there's a doorway, there's a portal with this beautiful owl here, this portal going through to the, where the grass is greener. So this death card, where are you portaling through to? What are you transforming? Where are you going? You're portaling through to a place where the grass is always greener. Like, but like literally, the, this time the grass really is greener. Look, look at the card, right? The grass was all frosty and white and snowy. You go through the portal, the grass is greener. So, <sighs> and that's where you can begin again. That's where you can begin anew. So, and with this energy for this to be the death card, right? Didn't I say something last week? Maybe that was in someone's private reading. I remember saying this recently. Um, like, the, I was like, I was like imagining when you're trying to go through a door, sometimes something literally doesn't fit through the door. Like imagine trying to put, like drag a really big couch through a really tiny door. You can't, it doesn't fit. So some things can literally never go through the door. You would have to like hack them into pieces and then the thing wouldn't be useful, right? What, would, what good would a couch be if it was all hacked into a bunch of pieces? So same thing for energetic portals, right? For your spiritual transformations, some things literally can't come with you. So this is another incidence of if necessary, there might be things that need to be left behind, but this feels like emotions that need to be less left behind. I, I, now I'm remembering another video I made recently, recently where I was just kind of saying the, the problem isn't the problem. The problem isn't having a problem. The problem is having a problem with the problem, right? If you can follow that, it's just like, Tune in, like, so part of this tuning into the emotional maturity, right, is tune into the zero point field, the cosmic neutrality, right? Ne neutral, 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 that completely neutral space. And there, with that, there can even be fears of neutrality, right? Because I feel like people sometimes resist neutrality because they're afraid, you know, tuning into the zero point field, tuning into the void consciousness, right? That involves like the understanding that at bottom the universe doesn't like the cosmos the omniverse right like consciousness itself doesn't have any laws doesn't have any rules and that idea 
is definitely triggering to people because it doesn't it like I mean we can look at all kinds of different religions and even just kind of you know people like me who go on the internet and say stuff right, <laughs> about spirituality um it, it's like there's always these ideas you know about there being like laws to the universe right people talk about so Christians would say, you know, God, the God-given laws, right? The Ten Commandments or, you know, your God-given right or stuff like that. Um, and I hear a lot of, you know, spiritual people talking about the natural law of the universe or even talking, we t or people talk about karma, um, d different stuff like that. Just all of these different ways that we can speak of laws that are out there in the universe, right? And those are all true from a certain perspective. It's like if you're tuning into those laws, then they are true. And it's like from a certain level, right? It's like, yes, our physical universe does have natural laws. Those do exist, but you can always transcend them, right? So it's like you just keep pushing it. Every time you find out another universal law, you can just transcend it. You can transcend it again and again and again. Every time you come up, oh, here's a ceiling, here's a law, here's a rule, it is real it is there but you can go above it and you can go beyond it and you can escape it and eventually if you go out far enough in in your journey of your consciousness you find yourself in the void you find yourself in the zero point field in the ultimate neutrality and in the place of ultimate neutrality there are no laws there are no gods there there is nothing it is zero it is zero it is the void there was nothing there but pure potential there is nothing there but what you create the only laws are the ones that you create. Before the creation of anything, that th there is just void. There is just zero, right? There's just the neutral space. So that, some people, there could be fear facing with that because when you truly tap into the energy of the zero point field, you find that there, there with no rules, that also kind of means that there is no consequences there are no safeguards there's nothing protecting you right because rules just think of human laws right just think of human laws they restrict but they also protect at least that is kind of their highest ideal right we have a law the law says don't do that and you go hey well that is interfering with my free will and they go, yeah, but like, if you, if people, if we, if we let everybody do that, then bad things would happen, right? So we have these laws and the idea behind them is that they restrict, but they also protect. So if you drop into the zero point field space, you're suddenly in this place where, okay, there is complete freedom, complete freedom. This is even a place where there is no ethics. There even is no morality there, because all of these things, all of these things, laws and ethics and morality, they have all been invented, <laughs> invented and constructed by consciousness on, on a lower level, on a level outside of the zero point field, right? In the zero point field, there's nothing but pure potential. Consciousness coalesces and then consciousness creates laws and morals and ethics and rules and codes of conduct and blah, 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 blah. So in the zero point field, there's only what you create. There's only what you choose. There's only the potential of what you decide. So that can be scary because nothing's protecting you but yourself right and your vibration will create exactly what your vibration is right when you're in the zero point field when you're in the void if you're standing there in the void you know well you're not standing there you're a blob of consciousness in the void being aware of nothing but void you're just there but you're a blob of consciousness, so you're vibrating. And then however you vibrate, that's what you create. <laughs> and so that is why this emotional maturity is so important, right? That's why this emotional maturity is so important because without the emotional maturity, you will create things that you don't like, right? <laughs> if, we're, if we're out in the void going wah, 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 <laughs> then we're gonna create more experiences for ourselves literally because we'll, if we're vibrating with a complaint then we'll create things that we can complain about if we're vibrating just with sovereignty and freedom and 
I mean, I'll just leave it at that. Like, what, what do you want? Strength? If you want strength, you can have strength. You want ecstasy? You can have ecstasy. You want bliss? You can have bliss. You want peace? You can have peace. You want nothing? You can have nothingness. So this, the, so the, the higher level of this, the higher experience of this is I just got really distracted by my husband um, talking really loudly about something in the next room. <laughs> so what was I trying to say? The higher experience of this is like owning your vibration on a completely new level, right? The emotional maturity. And this is part of why you came into human body because the human body is one of the best places you can be if you want to learn how to master your emotions. And through mastering your emotions, you master your vibration. And so this helps you create whatever it is you want to create. And it, and it also enables you to portal through to other realms of consciousness, to other dimensions, to less fixed places, right? To places where there are fewer rules, to places where there is more freedom, because you'll, you will now like be able to go there because you will have stabilized your vibration with your own emotional maturity, right? It's like, when we are in a less emotionally stable state where we're full of baggage and we're full of junk and all of that junk doesn't fit through the portal, right? It's like trying to get that couch through the door. It doesn't fit. It literally won't fit. And that is for such beautiful, beautiful purpose because imagine you, you're you kind of emotionally unstable and you're thinking about popping out into the void. Well, you don't want to go there. You don't want to go out into the void when you're unstable because you'll just create a bunch of stuff that you won't like, <laughs> right? So from this place of emotional maturity, you're gonna drop away all of the baggage that has been destabilizing you, right? The, all this baggage has been destabilizing you. And this is like, you know, sometimes we have to literally drop things, right? Some people could be dropping a job. Some people could be dropping a source of income or a person or a, a belief, but really for really at bottom of this, this is like dropping out of those feelings that you don't need to feel, right? The feeling of having a problem, right? So even if you have problems and we all have problems, that's, we're all going to, probably have problems for as long as we're in our human bodies, right? But the problems don't need to be problems. So one of the most important things to drop before you go through this portal is to drop the feeling of the feeling of having problems, right? It's changing your perspective. So you now look at your problems and just go, that's just some energy doing its thing. And I'm just going to continue being my awesome ass self right my emotionally mature stabilized queen of cups self i'm just gonna keep doing me i'm gonna do me i'm gonna be me i'm gonna sit here and shine my light and vibrate however i want to vibrate i'm gonna sit here and feel however i want to feel and do whatever it is i want to do and from that place you you all of that baggage it just won't matter anymore right you'll look at a problem that you think you have in your life and you go oh well you know yeah that's not really a problem i'm not going to feel problematic about it i'm just going to let it go at this at this point because you're standing in front of this portal you're standing in front of this door and the faster you can drop everything the sooner you get to go through the door because it is impossible to go through the door it is impossible to go through this transformation. It is impossible to reach your next spiritual plateau, to go on your next journey, to go on your next adventure, to whatever it is. It is impossible to have this leveling up until you have dropped everything that doesn't fit through the door. So you're going to be standing here at this door. You're going to be standing here at the threshold of this portal, the threshold of this portal in the universe. You're standing at the threshold of the portal and the portal is created in such a way that it does not let your baggage come through with you. So all of the feelings that we have about, I have this problem, I have that problem, I have this struggle, wah, 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 all of that, those feelings, they literally cannot go through the portal. So if you're hanging on to those things, you can't go through the portal either. So just jettison everything. Isn't that what I was saying last week? Drop everything, all of the feelings you have that are that are problematic. Drop all of your feelings about having a problem, right? Drop them all because you will stand here at this doorway. You will stand here at this portal for as long as it takes until you decide to just drop it all, to just drop it all. None of it, you don't need any of it. You don't need it, you don't need it, you don't need it. You don't need to have those feelings. You don't need to feel like that. You don't, <laughs> all, all, all of it, right? All of it, just all of those negative 
feelings, all of those unpleasant feelings. They, they can't come through the door. It's time to let them go. And <laughs> yes, beautiful kitty. This is not my kitten, as you can see. This is Princess Mishka. Thank you for visiting. You want to say hi and look at the camera? No? You just want to show your fluff? I love you too, pretty kitty. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. I think she came to tell me. Man, she came to say we should just all be more like cats, right? We should all be more like cats. Cats are sovereign and free and beautiful and perfect. And they do not, <laughs> like they don't sweat the small stuff, right? They do not sweat the small stuff. Yeah, we need some kitty cat magic. So I don't know, get yourself a cat. <laughs> That's one of my top five spiritual tips. Have cats. <laughs> have cats. Call in cat energy if you don't have cats. Call in cat energy. They are some of our best friends. Yes, I love you too. Beautiful kitty cat. All right, guys. Good luck. I'll see you later. Bye.